The Great Lakes supply drinking water to 10 million Ontarians. They are essential for our hydroelectric and nuclear power. Millions of tons of cargo traverse their waters every year. But do we take their greatness for granted? David Miller is part of a new group that wants to help raise the profile of the lakes and awareness of the dangers facing them. The former mayor of Toronto is president and CEO of WWF Canada, and he joins us now for more. I still want to call you your worship. That's I okay. At, go, go right ahead. I look at you and I still see sort of the mayor. But anyway, David Miller, good to have you here at TVO. It's a pleasure to be on. Let me read this from uh, the Toronto Star to get us started here. Sheldon, you want to bring this up? For some, they mean the beach. For others, they mean work. They can be a draw for tourists, but are often just a backdrop for locals. If you're an environmentalist, you might see them as a living, breathing thing in need of protection. But ask the average high school student and they'll roll their eyes like they would for any five-point answer on a geography test. On their own, they are. Ontario, Superior, Huron, Erie, and Michigan. Together, they are the Great Lakes. When it comes to the Great Lakes, they're right there. They're in our front yard, never mind backyard. Do we appreciate them enough? No, not at all, and I, I, I think they're amazing. You know, and I, I have the privilege, I came to Canada as an immigrant, so I sort of looked at the Great Lakes with, you know, a newcomer's eyes. You're from Britain. I'm from Britain, um, and we didn't have Great Lakes. We have <laughs> lakes, but not Great Lakes. They are amazing, they're beautiful, they're incredibly economically important, and I think that's one of the stories we don't realize. They're also under threat, and if you take their economic and social importance and their importance to human health, and then look at the threats that are happening, it becomes really clear that we need to know more and pay much more attention to the, the health of the Great Lakes. Any theories as to why we don't appreciate them as much as you think we should? I, I think it's sort of normal. It's like people don't go up the CN Tower unless they've got visitors, right? You, you know, they're, it's there. You turn the tap on, we get clean water at a very low cost. We're just used to it. Um, and I, I think it's that simple for me. Sometimes though, when you travel, you see them with fresh eyes. Like a few years ago, uh, um, our family drove to Quetico to go canoeing. And it's a very long way, <laughs> very long way. How long did it take? Oh, 22 hours or something. And you, um, you get to the Terry Fox statue. This in you, Thunder Bay. Yes, mm -hmm. you go, oh my gosh. You know, I've been driving for what seems like days and he ran this he ran far. That. And we stopped, and you stop on that north shore of Lake Superior. Oh, it is stunningly beautiful. And I was sort of looking at that lake with the eyes of a tourist. So maybe that's something we need is just to, to refresh our, our views and, and look at it like a newcomer. The first adjective you used when describing them was amazing. Yes. What makes them amazing? Well, I think, first of all, they're the world's largest source of fresh water. Um, that's quite unique. And if you look at around the world, there are water crises in a lot of places, like the Aral Lake has virtually disappeared, for example. We've managed to take care of them. I thought it was the Aral Sea. Aral Sea, sorry. Okay, this so is in, we're uh, on lakes, yes. Okay. It's in, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and, and because of overuse of water. So it's amazing that they're still here. It's amazing the economic success that they've supported. And we take that for granted a little bit. If you look at the economy around the Great Lakes, it's probably the world's third, third largest economy. It's very significant. Um, and it's, you know, the water relatively uh, is in pretty good shape. And that's amazing too in a time when we put a lot of stress on water and you see challenges with fresh water all over the globe. Let's talk about Greatness, the Great Lakes Project. What is that? That's a group of people led by the Lieutenant Governor who are trying to draw public attention to both the beauty and the importance of the Great Lakes. Um, so it's a project really to tell the story of the Great Lakes and re-engage people in that conversation. How are you doing that? Uh, well, there'll be a variety of things, uh, events, art. Um, you know, one of the things I saw when I was a student when I came to Canada was a film called Paddle to the Sea. Oh yeah, sure, Yeah, remember it well. And that, that really, it was a, essentially about pollution in the Great Lakes, even mm. though it was the story of a journey of a, a little carved uh, um, native figure in a canoe. But it was about the pollution in the Great Lakes. That had an impact on me for uh, the rest of my life. I still think about that in, mm. in the work I do with World Wildlife Fund Canada. And so it's that kind of project, storytelling that will reach people and make them look at the Great Lakes and say, how are we going to address the threats? How are we going to build on the strengths? How are we going to protect the lakes? when uh, the next time when somebody in the United States says we should start shipping this water to the south of the US, it happens about every 20 or 30 years. Mm -hmm. Completely crazy idea, totally unsustainable, but it'll come. And mm -hmm. how are we gonna fight that off? Well, it starts with us knowing the lakes ourselves 
and telling the stories to ourselves. Uh, I think when I grew up in this province, on the license plate it used to say, keep it beautiful. Yes. And then it went to yours to discover. But in Michigan, it said, Great Lakes, right there on the license plate. Do we need more of that here? We, we need more reminders, yes. I, I, that's interesting, Steve. I didn't uh, know that, although I've been to Michigan lots of times. I, didn't, I just didn't notice it. Um, I, I, th I think those kinds of reminders really matter. Mm. Um, things like my experience, you know, driving to Thunder Bay, that mm. sort of thing matters. Lake Huron, watching a storm on Lake Huron, or the sunset, it's incredible. It's absolutely magnificent. People need the opportunity to do that, not just by going there, but in their own living rooms and houses. And those are the kinds of stories that this group wants to, to help spark. There is a story that apparently has been floating around since the 1990s about a student at Ryerson University who developed photographs using water from the Great Lakes. He wasn't taking pictures on the iPhone. He was actually taking pictures and developing them. Great Lakes water, no chemicals. And it's true. It's not an urban legend, apparently. For many people, that might be the lakes they remember. How do you change now you said earlier they're relatively pollution free they're in relatively good shape but how do you change impressions that they're not a chemical toxic soup well they're relatively in good shape compared to things like the Aral Sea which okay. are disappearing um, you know World Wildlife Fund we have assessed the health of the Great Lakes in fact we're in the midst of assessing the health of all the uh, watersheds across Canada um, it's never been done before and what we've found in the Great Lakes is the Lake Erie and Lake Ontario sub watersheds aren't bad but a lot of the other watersheds, we don't have the data. And we know what the threats are, invasive species, pollution, climate change, diversions, uh, like I mentioned a few minutes ago. Those are real. Um, and so the first thing is we actually need the data. We need to engage people, citizen science. Uh, we need part of that. We need governments uh, to ensure that when there's a project that the data is assessed about the, the water in the lakes, it's public. Those stories need to be, need to be known. You know, all of our drinking water in Toronto comes from the, from Lake Ontario. People you know, don't. I'm not sure people know that. Well, our drinking water comes from Lake Ontario. And where does our sewage go? Lake Ontario. Right. So we need to be very aware of this mm -hmm. and uh, very cognizant of what we're putting in. Mm. And I, our research shows um, essentially we don't know enough. And so that's a part of this project too. How do how do we help inspire government and others and citizen scientists to help us get the information to show the real facts? You may have answered this already because with the paddle to the sea story, but uh, that was a childhood memory and I don't know if that was the actual sort of eureka aha moment for you about the significance of the Great Lakes. Did you have one sort of in adolescence or in adulthood which really opened your eyes to everything? Yeah, I, I think for me it's been an uh, ongoing process when, when I go to different places in the lakes. Um, so paddle to the sea awoke me to the issue that we were severely polluting the Great Lakes. You know, that was the time of Love Canal, for example. Mm. Terrible chemical pollution in, in the upstate Great Lakes. New York. Upstate New York, outside Buffalo. Um, driving to Quetico and paddling there, and uh, we camped one night on the north shore of Lake Superior. Like that is, I'm getting goosebumps right now. What it time is of year so was it? stunningly beautiful. That would have been about June. Hmm. Uh, but you know, it's not hot up there. It no, felt, right. it felt right. like a spring day or maybe a fall day, but mm. stunning. Stunning, stunning. And for me, that beauty and the reinforcement, reinforcing that beauty over time, I've now traveled all over all the Great Lakes. That's what speaks to your heart. Hmm. And I think that's really why they, the idea of this project, I'm just part of it, so it's not my idea, but the idea is so powerful because you can speak to people's hearts. And when you have people in their hearts, they're gonna make the change that's needed to protect uh, this incredible natural wonder. You and I both live in the capital city. You got up to Quetico on Lake Superior. I spend a little time in the summer on Lake Huron, Manitoulin Island, but we live in the south. Yes. Do you think people north of the French River have a greater appreciation of the Great Lakes than we do here in the south? I think they do. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's part of people's everyday lives, mm -hmm. and they're working lakes to people as well. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit of a different appreciation. Mm -hmm. You know, if I go to Quetico, it's more of a nature experience. If somebody lives in the Sioux, shipping matters to them a lot, or yep. in Thunder Bay but they also appreciate the importance in their lives because they see often the direct economic connection, not just the recreational connection. And I think that's really important too because this is the hub of the North American economy and we need to remember that because that's why you know there's, there's jobs and people are able to live in a place like Toronto. There is an officer of the Ontario legislature called the Environmental Commissioner of Ontario, nonpartisan office. 
studies the environmental situation in the province, and this is from uh, a report done last year in which the commissioner writes the following, wrote the following. It is a far cry from funding commitments made by Ontario for other major projects in the province, such as a billion two to finish extending Toll Highway 407 eastward, over a billion five in operating funding and additional investments for the 2015 Toronto Pan Am and Parapan American Games, and $60 million annually for forest access roads. With a more significant investment, Ontario could achieve real progress in reversing the damage that has been done to the Great Lakes. Uh, you know, you're, you're talking about emphasis and whether or not we appreciate what it's been done. The suggestion here is that um, there's money for a lot of other things, but maybe not for the Great Lakes. I, it's actually true. We yeah. did a study. I was the co-chair of the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence cities, along with Mayor Richard Daly from Chicago. And we were looking at economic issues, issues of invasive species, which are very significant, zebra mussels in Canada, the Asian carp potentially in Chicago, um, and issues of the health of the water. And we did a study, and the study was very clear. Uh, cities and towns are investing billions into the health of the Great Lakes, particularly in water treatment, sewage. Provinces, states, and federal governments are investing millions, not tens of millions, millions. Um, not enough. Not enough. There needs to be a much more systematic effort, starting with proper analysis of data. Where are the problems? Yeah, how do we solve them? Uh, what do we do about the threat of the Asian carp? It's a very serious threat. It's a bit more on the American side, but it's really serious. Um, and I, I think one of the reasons the people who uh, created this um, uh, group I'm part of wanted to get more attention to these issues is so that there ultimately can be political action to find out the exact causes of the problems and address them. We are on uh, Tuesday night and Wednesday night, we should say, going to focus more on the climate change effects on yes. the Great Lakes. Uh, but short of that tonight, let's talk about uh, some of the damage we're doing. You pointed out that our drinking water comes from there and our sewage goes into there. Well, um, what other damage are we doing to the Great Lakes right now? Not, not what nature's doing, but what are we doing to the Great Lakes? Well, invasive species came because of us, hmm. right? Ships came and dumped ballast that they'd gotten uh, somewhere else, off on the other side of the Atlantic, and the invasive species like zebra mussels, which have caused a huge amount of damage, came in through ballast water. Hmm. Uh, that issue people are trying to address, but it's happening very slowly. Uh, maybe have found some solutions now, but serious damage from us. Another is many towns uh, and cities around the Great Lakes don't have their sewers separated. Okay, and this is a very kind of technical issue, but... Tell what, us what that means. What it means is the um, uh, a big pipe just has a divider down the middle of it. And on one side, the rainwater goes, and the other side, the sewage. And when there's a really big storm, it all mixes together and you get raw sewage going out into the Great Lakes. We had that problem in Toronto uh, 10, yes. 20 years ago. Toronto's done a lot of work to solve yeah. that, including building natural things like settling ponds to, to address it, but a lot of places haven't. And if you're a small town in Ontario, it's exceptionally expensive to do that, hmm. and you can't afford it. You need money from the provincial government or the federal government to build that kind of infrastructure. There's still industrial effluent. There's issues of water levels, which is probably more to do with climate change. Hmm. Uh, but are very serious if, you know, if you go to Georgian Bay over the years, you've seen them drop huge impact on the natural ability of lakes to keep clean because the wetlands started to dry. <laughs> really serious. So there's, there's all of those uh, implications. I think the good news is um, it is considerably better than it was when, in the 70s when mm -hmm. I saw Paddle to the Sea. There's mm -hmm. definitely been improvement, and that's because of some smart strategies uh, in the past, particularly from the U.S. Are you still confident that our drinking water is being appropriately treated and there are no concerns about that? Oh, in Toronto, absolutely, yes. It's tested automatically, something like every second. Um, in fact, it's more pure than popular brands of bottled water from France. That's been tested, I hear too. that all the time. How can that be? Um, well, they have, you know, um, uh, natural ingredients in from their wells that aren't taken out. Our huh. water is completely purified. And, uh, in fact, if you leave it in the fridge overnight, I'm going to put a plug in for Toronto water. Leave it in the fridge overnight, <laughs> any taste of chlorine or anything disappears. So it not only is uh, much more pure than a popular bottled water from France, uh, it also tastes better and it's far cheaper. So we, we can be confident in that. Okay. I also remember maybe 10, 20 years ago, the beaches in Toronto used to be closed relatively frequently during the summertime when it got hot because, you know, it wasn't safe to swim in there. 
Are we past that problem now? No, there is a good program called the Blue Flag Program that tells you when we meet international standards. Um, certain beaches were past that problem uh, because of some structural changes that were made. Uh, but we do have some problems in the western beaches where I live, for example. We mm. still have some problems. And in Toronto Harbour, there's a lot of work to be done. It's not talked about much, but there's a lot of work to be done in the inner harbour in Toronto. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's very expensive, so it never gets started. But that's a place where we need to concentrate and focus our efforts on cleaning it up. If you're going to swim in Toronto, go to the beaches on the island or Ashbridge's Bay. They're great, and the island ones are, are incredibly clean. Um, Hanlon's Point, in particular, is, is very, very clean. Uh, it's also clothing optional, so you've got to decide <laughs> if that's your kind of place. Uh -huh. But it's, it's a great place to swim. Which is your favorite? Beach in Toronto? Lake. Which oh, is your favorite great lake? You know, I, it, I feel a bit like you cheering for the Red Sox, because <laughs> my favorite great lake uh, is Lake Superior. Hmm. The, the cliffs along it and the majesty of it and the history of it and the fact that it's a working lake, very important in Canada's history, it's a working lake, but also stunningly beautiful. Um, it, it, that, to me, that speaks to, to my heart. And I've only been there a few times, but it's magnificent. Do you not like Lake Michigan because it's all in the United States and we don't have hardly any of it here? No comment. <laughs> Gotcha. David Miller, President and CEO, World Wildlife Fund Canada, the former Mayor of Toronto. It's always good to have you back here at TVO. Thanks, Steve. Pleasure to be on. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit TVO.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.